Good afternoon. <laughs> you know I can't be that serious. <laughs> Labels. Strict, complex, charge, defining labels. Prior to my time here at Georgetown, I felt like people use labels to tell me what I can and cannot do, who I am and who I'm not. Mira, muchacha, get down from there before you hurt yourself. Little girls don't change light bulbs. That's what men are for. Of course, there was no male figure in my household. So when my mother wasn't looking, I kept changing light bulbs <laughs> and clog sinks and toilets and even bad antennas with foil. Now, I don't know how many of you remember antennas. But I sure do, because they always got in the way of The Simpsons, a TV show nobody in my immigrant household knew wasn't age-appropriate for a seven-year-old. <laughs> Labels. As a high school student, I started questioning my sexuality after my mom was convinced I was in love with my best friend. I would ask the lunch table their opinions. And they would respond, you're not a lesbian. You're too pretty for that. Of course, after four years of deconstructing the meaning behind everything, I still don't know what being pretty means or what that has to do with my sexuality. Although, my college education does have me thinking that maybe the lunch table isn't the appropriate setting to start questioning my existence. Labels. When I got to Georgetown, I felt like here come the labels once again, closing in on me. You know, like a scene from an Indiana Jones movie? Myself, starring as Indiana Jones, of course, trying to grasp for something, some sense or idea of who I am amidst 4,000 other students. And then, and then you grab what you're looking for, and all of a sudden, the walls in the ancient tomb start closing in on you. My first year at Georgetown, people told me I was everything from black, Moroccan, Persian, to Jordan Sparks' little sister. <laughs> you can't make these kind of things up. Those were the walls boxing me in. I remember one time I was sitting in class. Actually, no, like 15 times I was sitting in class. And somehow, I was called upon to be the voice for someone else's community. Someone else's community I had no idea of. It was exhausting, frustrating. Then, I came to the realization, I don't have time for this. <laughs> I don't have time to be the mixed, Latina, queer, feminist chick in your class. And I don't have time to also be a full-time biochemistry major. <laughs> so like any other typical college student who changes their major four or five times, I, of course, dropped the biochem major. You see, I knew that my love of science and health would always be there. But it was time to create change. Turn my frustration into positivity. Define myself. That defining moment could easily be taken away from me. I mean, what time did I have to begin with as a woman of color working se several jobs to put myself through school? So I became a women and gender studies major. I got political. I created spaces where I could bridge my Latina and West Indian backgrounds with my womanness and my queerness. In return, Georgetown taught me that just because Elevation Burger is around the corner from the McComb Center does not mean you bring your cheeseburger into a Jewish kosher space. <laughs> Georgetown taught me that there are people who think that living in poverty is defined by having a Walmart in your zip code. And that's okay because you just have to remind them that they complimented your yoga pants from Walmart last week. I learned exactly what consulting is. 
Actually, no, I'm still working on that. <laughs> I learned that when you fall off a horse, literally fall off a horse, maybe you should go to the doctor instead of trying to turn in your thesis on time. I learned that when someone at Tombs shows you a disturbing picture of your friend in the student newspaper, the Hoya thing is to voice your concern in Red Square. Interreligious understanding, academic excellence, cura personalis, contemplation and action, community and diversity. These are the values I learned through all my trials and triumphs at Georgetown University. I learned that the labels that once were so constricting and predetermined could come together to build community, to solve problems, to foster love. That these Jesuit principles we see on the flags all around campus are what finally have me gently correcting people who put a label on me instead of rolling my eyes in frustration. These principles are what allow me to take the time to converse with my peers so they do not become repeat offenders, but rather allies in learning about pluralism and diversity with me. Because what does it mean to be LGBTQ? It is more than just lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, with an asterisk, queer or questioning. It is more than just a label. At Georgetown, LGBTQ might mean organizing drag shows, coming out of an actual closet in Red Square, having a queer Bible study, or matching a boa with your salmon-colored shorts. On the other hand, being an LGBTQ Hoya might mean vowing to take a few days of silence holding your bladder because you can't find an appropriate bathroom to use, providing a couch on a Saturday night for your friend after they are harassed at the bar. Many of our LGBTQ experiences lie somewhere between these narratives, yet they also lie in the narratives that are often forgotten. The great Audre Lorde once said, there's something, there's someone always asking you to underline one piece of yourself, whether it's black, woman, mother, dyke, teacher, etc., because that's the piece they need to key into. They want to dismiss everything else. But once you do that, then you've lost because you've become acquired or bought by that particular essence of yourself. Taking Audre Lorde's advice, your LGBTQ experience may be that time you made history and won Mr. Georgetown in all your lovely drag. But it, but it also is all those hours you spent procrastinating on Lao too. It is the imaginary gray hairs you acquired from coordinating Rengila or Reventong, as well as the backlash you received for identifying as a gay Republican. Being LGBTQ means petitioning for a Casa Latina or a diversity requirement, because we don't have these things yet, or because you want to share a piece of your old home with your new home, Georgetown. Being LGBTQ means going beyond the label and connecting with all of these other wonderful aspects of yourself. And while there is no one particular LGBTQ narrative, there is this sense of solidarity that comes from sharing our differences and challenging norms. If there is one thing I want my LGBTQ family to know walking through here is this. It is the importance in continuing this community because it is through relationships and intersectionality that we truly gain a sense of ourselves here and beyond, 
aside from the labels and against the odds. Labels. Labels? We are Georgetown.